crucial. As we talk about coffee, let me remind you that if you're sick, always consult your doctor about your coffee consumption. Let's talk about coffee. What is coffee? Coffee is made from coffee beans, and these beans are dried and roasted seeds from the coffee fruits, which grow on coffee trees. Let's begin with two myths about coffee. Myth number one, coffee is terrible for your health. Many people believe that coffee is bad for your health. And the reason is that when we use coffee incorrectly, it can lead to an increase in blood pressure. And remember, blood pressure is one of the things your doctor tracks when he tracks your health. And that is true. Coffee can raise your blood pressure. Abusing coffee, like abusing anything else, including food, can be bad for your health. Abusing the coffee that leads to increase in blood pressure. But coffee on its own, when we drink it properly, is not bad for your health. There are many studies showing that coffee reduces risk of diseases. For example, there are a couple studies showing a decreased risk of certain cancers among those who drink coffee regularly. And usually, if something reduces your cancer risk, it's almost always healthy for you. A study from 2018 showed that coffee reduces the risk of all death, the causes of all death of whatever reason. So death is the opposite of health. A study from 2011 showed that coffee reduces the risk to have a stroke. A stroke is when your brain doesn't get enough blood. And the peak benefits are around 2 to 4 cups per day. But when you go higher than that, the benefits begin to go down. Another study from 2018 showed that people who drink coffee get less diabetes. Since diabetes kills about 1 in 8 people, coffee has to be good for your health. Now, personally, I'm more interested in what happens in the body when we drink coffee, which makes perfect sense to me why coffee is good for your health. Your body always wants to reserve energy, to rest, in order to survive if there is famine or a life risk. This is why we are all lazy, but we don't like to admit it. If you reach the point that you acknowledge your laziness, now you know where it's coming from. It's not from you, it's from the body. We know that when you take your body off the comfort zone, it leads to better health. It's similar to exercise. When you exercise, you essentially force your body to give you resources and energy that your body doesn't want you to have, unless your life is in danger. But when you exercise, you force your body to give you access to those resources, and the result of that demand of energy improves your health. So similar to exercise, coffee does a similar thing. Coffee takes your body off the comfort zone. It forces the body to release energy and resources. And as a result, you feel more energetic. That's healthy most of the time. So coffee, in the right amount, in the right timing, is healthy for you. However, there is a tiny problem with coffee. Coffee doesn't come alone. We add two components that are not particularly healthy. Sugar and milk. I'm going to leave milk alone for a moment, but sugar is your enemy. It damages your body. So the more you reduce your sugar intake in your coffee, the healthier your coffee is going to be. If you struggle with sugar, I recommend watching my free seminar about breaking the sugar addiction. You can register for free when you go to rimonwellness.com forward slash seminar. And when you get rid of sugar cravings, you will enjoy coffee, enjoy the taste of coffee, without the need of all of that sugar, or at least less sugar than what you drink right now. That's for the first myth. Let's move on to myth number two. Coffee gives you energy. The truth, coffee does not give you energy. To remind you, coffee pushes your body out of the comfort zone to give you access to energy that it has. In other words, it creates energy expenditure. It doesn't give you fuel. All coffee does is pressing the gas pedal in your body. So if you're physically fatigued, coffee is like pressing a pedal with an empty tank. In fact, it's not really healthy to do so. What gives you energy is sleep, good nutrition, supplements, and keeping your body young from within. All of those things help your body to produce energy. The coffee only gives you access to that energy. This is why coffee is an energy management tool, not an energy creation tool. And there are times that you do want to force your body to give you more energy. For example, let's say that you are in an important meeting in mid-afternoon. Some people, including myself, 
have a natural slump in energy in the mid-afternoon, between 2 to 5 p.m. Now, if you're like me, maybe your grand-grandparents used to hunt animals in the evening and needed that energy. So the body wants you to prepare to the evening. But you live now. You need that energy. And if you're not going to close that deal in the meeting, you're going to be in trouble. So when you drink coffee, in this situation, you force your body to give you energy right now. In summary, coffee does not create energy. It's a tool to manage energy and give you access to energy. How does coffee work and what it does in our bodies? You probably know that coffee works through an ingredient called caffeine. Caffeine appears in other plants, such as black tea. So a lot of the things we're going to talk today about coffee are also true for black tea. Caffeine is a protection of plants against bugs and insects. The coffee tree tells the bug to leave me alone or you die. And caffeine does so by stimulating very powerfully the bug's nervous system. And that's exactly what happens in our bodies. It stimulates our nervous system too. But because we are much bigger and heavier than bugs and insects, we get a handy pick-me-up. If you look at a cockroach and think it's so different from you, then you realize that your body reacts to coffee the same as the cockroach. That's spooky. Let's continue to the effects in our bodies of coffee. Coffee activates the physical stress system. Coffee sends more energy to the muscles and the brain. This is why it could improve exercise performance. And coffee shuts down the digestive system, which is why coffee suppresses hunger. Coffee also shuts down the recovery system in our bodies. That's why you don't want to drink coffee after exercise when you want to recover, or before you sleep, which is a recovery time too. I said in the beginning that coffee is a drug. And yes, you can get addicted to it. However, my opinion is that coffee is one of the best drugs that we have, together with dark chocolate, which I need to make a whole new episode about. So why would I say that coffee is one of the best drugs that we have? First, it is healthy for you. You cannot say that on almost any other drugs that we have. In fact, most of them will destroy your health. And second, when you look at drugs, any drug, cocaine, heroin, marijuana, alcohol, one of the questions you need to ask is, if I get addicted to this drug, how easy it is to stop consuming it? Cocaine and heroin are very difficult to stop consuming. The same with alcohol. If you become addicted to alcohol, it is extremely difficult to stop drinking it. But with coffee and caffeine? In this case, if you drink too much coffee, which can happen, it's not terribly difficult to stop drinking it for a few days and wean off caffeine. Now, how do you know if you're addicted to coffee? Easily. If you cannot go through the day without coffee, it's a good idea to take a few days off to reset the system and your relationship with coffee. In fact, it's going to make coffee more potent in your body. Because during this time of winning off coffee, your body resets its defense against coffee. So when you drink it again, the effectiveness of coffee goes up. Effectiveness means your ability to increase your alertness, focus, and energy for a lower dose. And you'll get a better impact of coffee in your body without the negative side effects. So that's important, so listen to this. I want to talk about the value of decaf coffee for a healthy lifestyle. Caffeine is a very powerful stimulator, and sometimes you do not need or want this stimulation. But you still want to enjoy your coffee. This is exactly where decaf coffee fits perfectly. Decaf coffee means a coffee where the producer strip away the stimulating ingredient, the caffeine, from the drink. The caffeine is not stripped completely in decaf. Decaf has a bit of caffeine, about one-tenth. So you can essentially drink 10 cups of decaf coffee and get the stimulation of one cup. So decaf coffee gives you the pleasure of drinking coffee without the stimulation of the caffeine. Essentially, decaf coffee allows you to separate an energy management tool, which is regular coffee, from the enjoyment of coffee without forcing your body to spend energy. So in times you don't need the energy, but you do want the pleasure, you can go with decaf. And the best way to incorporate this drink into your lifestyle is first buying decaf coffee to your house, and any brand has decaf, and also remember that every coffee shop has decaf. 
To summarize this point, decaf coffee is an amazing tool to enjoy coffee without the stimulation when you don't need it. And decaf coffee is going to be very relevant in the coffee rules we're going to have today. Before the rules, there are two principles that all the rules following are coming from. One, the timing of drinking coffee is critical. And two, the dosage of coffee shots in your coffee is very important. A word about timing. Because coffee stimulates certain systems in your body, you don't want to stimulate them all the time. And because coffee pushes the gas pedal and takes away energy from your tank, you want to be selective when you push the pedal. With the dosage, the amount of coffee shots matters for three reasons. One, you don't want to waste too much energy too fast by drinking too much coffee at once. It's like when driving a car. You want to push the gas pedal in the right amount and not to waste gas, which you would need later. Second, if you drink too much coffee at once, your body begins to eliminate the coffee earlier from your system. So you won't get the boost effect for a long period of time. And third, if you overdose coffee, it will hurt your health. It will increase blood pressure. And the amount of coffee shots that you drink is really the stimulation that you get. What's the ideal amount of coffee shots per day? The best range is between two to four shots of coffee per day. Now, just to be clear, when I said two to four shots per day, I do not include decaf here. I'm talking about only caffeinated shots of coffee, regular coffee. How did I reach that number? First, I told you that coffee is good for you. And there was one study showing that protection from stroke was at the highest between two to four cups per day. Also, from my experiments, I noticed for sure that two to three cups per day didn't create resistance for my body, meaning I could get the same boost of focus every day without my body resist the coffee and reduce the effect. Now, I haven't checked four cups per day, but I believe that if I were to go higher than four cups, then the body would start resisting coffee and the boost would go down. I would lose this effect. So two to four cups of coffee, make sure that you're going to get the boost every time without a problem and without resistance. Last note, I know that many people have different sensitivity to coffee, but sometimes we don't know if it's because our body developed resistance to coffee or it's our genetics that set a higher bar for dosage to get the same effect. Personally, I'm very sensitive and I can react to half a shot and the effect is immediate if I drink on empty stomach. So I do acknowledge the individuality here, but only after we remove the resistance to coffee. Now let's go to the rules. 10 rules for coffee in a healthy lifestyle. Are you ready for this? Rule number one, start drinking coffee when you start the work, not before. In my parents' house, my father used to drink coffee immediately as he woke up, in order to wake up. And while driving to work, he drank two more cups of coffee. By the time he got to work, he already drank three cups of coffee. This is not an effective use of coffee. My father could get himself organized to work and drive without the stimulation of coffee. And also, my father lost the effectiveness of coffee because now every coffee he will drink during their work had more resistance from the body and less boost. As we said, coffee is pressing the gas pedal. When you wake up, when you prepare to work, you don't need the pedal yet. You don't need the stimulation. Besides, when you wake up, as you move physically, your body will naturally will wake up. Give it 30 to 60 minutes. Your body doesn't need coffee. It needs movement and time. So don't drink coffee immediately as you wake up, but wait when you start working. Rule number two, avoid regular coffee near sleep. Well, that's obvious now that you understand how coffee prevents recovery and increases stress. You don't want to go to a recovery mode, aka sleep, and have a drug in your system that prevents recovery. How long should you stop drinking coffee before you go to sleep? It takes about six hours for your body to eliminate most of caffeine from your system. So I would put a rule of not drinking coffee in the evening. Unless, of course, you're in some insane party that is going deep into the night. Or in a hackathon. Rule number three. Are you with me? 
Coffee is great to force your body into work mode when it doesn't want to. Our bodies have their own energy plans. There are times in the day your natural energy will go up and then down. For example, I have a natural peak of energy in the morning and in the evening, and a slump in the mid-afternoon. You probably noticed that you personally have your energy rhythm. Ideally, you do want to plan your day around this rhythm. You don't want to fight it and to fight your body. But what if you have an important work to do right when your body decides to go into the slump? Or what if your body is playing out lazy when you need it to work? Coffee kicks in very well in those situations. So yes, drink coffee when your body is lazy and you must work. But take into account your energy rhythm. We talked about times when you need to work, but what if you don't work? That leads me to the next rule. Rule number four, prefer decaf coffee on weekends and on vacations. I don't know about you, but on weekends, I want to recover and get prepared for the coming week. I want to come energized. I don't want to waste energy in the weekend as much as I can. And what coffee does? It prevents recovery. So on weekends, I usually prefer decaf. It is true for vacation as well. So if you go on vacation, I suggest you rethink if you need the caffeine. If not, I would go decaf here. Next, rule number five, listen to this. Coffee is great before exercise, but not after exercise. When you exercise, you need your muscles to function at their best. You want to spend energy. And that's exactly what coffee helps to do. In fact, coffee could improve the effectiveness of your exercise because coffee helps you to push your body harder and the intensity of exercise is essentially what brings you the health results or whatever results, even if it's just muscle growth. However, after the exercise, what exactly you want to achieve? First, you want the recovery to kick in. And second, you want your digestive system to work. Many people eat protein foods such as whey, chicken, meat, cheese, and eggs after exercise for recovery. Now, what coffee does? It prevents recovery and shuts down the digestive system, so your muscles get fewer nutrients. So drink coffee before exercising, not after. Rule number six. Use coffee to delay hunger, not to energize after meals. It's very common to drink coffee after meals to overcome the energy slump of the meal. Let's see what happens in our bodies. When we eat meals, our digestive system sucks energy. It takes effort to digest foods, that's the reality. Then coffee comes in and shuts down the digestive system and stimulates the stress system. So you feel more energetic, but now your absorption of nutrients from the food you ate goes down. If you want your body to get those nutrients, it makes no sense to drink coffee after meals. What does make sense is following the two options. If you need to get back to work after the meal, prefer a small snack and use coffee to stifle the hunger. Coffee is great for suppressing hunger. So use coffee to suppress that hunger and wait with this large meal for later in the day. And if you eat a meal and feel a slump of energy, take 10 to 20 minutes of nap. Your body needs time and energy to digest. That's the reality. And it makes sense to help your body in that process of digestion instead of fighting it. Let's move on. Rule number seven. Manage your coffee shots according to your energy needs. Most coffee shops serve drinks with two or sometimes three shots of coffee. For example, most Americanos come with two shots of coffee. A large cappuccino can come with two to three shots of coffee. All those extra shots can waste your energy sooner than later, and then you're gonna get a slump of energy later in the day. Believe me, I've done experiments, and again and again, when I drank too much coffee early, I had an energy slump later. Now, as I said, I can react very well to half a dose of coffee. So two doses give me too much energy, and I'm going to find myself with less energy later. So think about how many shots of coffee you really need and how much coffee they put in your coffee when you order outside. And believe me, in all coffee shops, they will be happy to give you fewer shots for the same drink. And you can order the same drink, combining regular shots with decaf shots. 
And after you drink a bit, you can always add hot water or hot milk to extend the life of your coffee without adding more shots that you may not need. So when we use coffee to manage our energy properly, we have to pay attention to the amount of shots that we drink in, in the drinks we order or we prepare at home. Now, there is another important rule about managing our coffee shots. Listen to this. Rule number eight. Sip coffee instead of drinking one shot after another. Because coffee gets into our system immediately, and because it's like pressing the energy pedal, as soon as you drink caffeine, your body begins to remove it. So it makes less sense to drink the entire drink in one minute, one full swoop, and get an immediate boost that wanes. It makes more sense to sip it slowly. Let the caffeine get into your system drop by drop, as you need the energy. So sipping coffee slowly gives you a stable energy over a long period of working session. And I did it with exercise too. I used to drink coffee before exercise. And now I put it in water bottle, not hot water, and sip between the workouts. And I notice a better energy response from my body. I have more energy in my workouts. Now moving to the next rule, and that's important, so listen to this. Rule number nine, add sugar to your coffee on your own. I said that coffee is healthy for you, but sugar is not. If so, you want to add the minimal amount of sugar that you absolutely need in your coffee. And when you add it yourself, you might realize, you know, it's not so much sugar. However, it's common for coffee shops to serve drinks already sweetened, either with sugar or syrup. So they don't always call it sugar, but if it is sweet, be sure it has sugar inside. My rule here is to ask to not put sweetness and sugar before they serve you the drink. You know, sometimes drinks usually come sweetened, but the coffee shops are more than willing to not put the syrup or sugar in the preparation. So don't worry, just ask. Then you can add sugar on your own, with a minimal amount. This tiny difference of a teaspoon of sugar here and there is worth pounds of sugar a year. In summary, take control over the sugar added to your coffee, and add it yourself. Rule number 10. If you feel unwell, avoid coffee. If you feel a bit unwell, or tired, fatigued, you're having a cough or a runny nose, your body has a battle. Even if your body did not send you a memo about which types of viruses or bacteria enter your system. The last thing your body needs now is something to stimulate the stress response. What your body really needs is to recover. And you should know by now that coffee does exactly the opposite. Another thing that you need when you're a bit unwell is you want a strong, reactive immune system. And there was a study showing that our immune system become less aggressive when we have coffee in our system. Which makes perfect sense to me, since the immune system works with the recovery system. Now, sometimes it's good to have a mild immune system. But not when we are unwell. We want our immune system to react. So if you're unwell, avoid coffee. And follow, of course, your doctor's advice first. Now, because I always over-deliver, that's who I am and I can do nothing about it, I have a bonus rule for you. The bonus rule is, practice mindful drinking. Be present at the moment when you drink coffee. Really enjoy it. Do not just drink coffee on the way to do something else. Make time for yourself to drink the coffee, even if it's just 5 to 10 minutes. Be only with the coffee and not with electrical appliances, messages, or anything else. And by the way, that's why I'm not a big fan of espresso shots. There's a great mindful pleasure in drinking coffee beyond this half a second of consumption. So that's for the 10 plus bonus rules today. Other episodes that you may enjoy relating to today's talk. Episode number 6 is about creating an energetic mornings with coffee. Inside, I talk about my five habits to reach deep focus in the morning. So if you want to listen to this, go to rimonwellness.com forward slash six. And also we talked today about sugar. If you want to learn more about how to break the sugar addiction in five simple steps, and you can do it as quickly as 21 days, I have a free seminar that explains exactly that. Simply type rimonwellness.com forward slash seminar. 
Breaking the sugar addiction also reduces sugar cravings, so you could enjoy coffee with minimal or no sweetness. I'm wishing you a wonderful day. Don't forget to subscribe. We have new episodes every two weeks. And remember, youth is the goal. Healthy lifestyle is the way, and simplicity is the key.